Dozer. Hey everybody, Kyle here with Spicer Designs. Damn it. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. I need to get a freaking door opener for this thing. And I have to prop it, otherwise it will hit the machine. I am going to be making a video about these two gas cans. If I haven't posted it already, I will be posting it very soon. Aside from that, I have some bad news. I need to use the new Bobcat E35, but unfortunately I cannot. Here's why. Let's hop in this thing. .07 hours left until it needs to be serviced. I have 50.7 hours on it. Don't ask me how that math works because at 50 hours that is when the break-in service is due, so I'm .7 over. I've got all the stuff to do it. That's what we're gonna do today. Oh no, don't tell me. Son of a when I shot the intro, I freaking turned the key on to look at the hours, and it's a couple days later, my freaking battery's dead. Oh yeah, she's dead. Brand freaking new. Yeah, buddy. All right, I got the 2024 Bobcat E35 all polished up and looking fresh again. So today we're gonna perform the break-in service, which is required at 50 hours. We're gonna do everything that the manual asks us to do, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it and hopefully make it somewhat interesting and not a totally boring video, because that can happen pretty quick. So what we're gonna need for the 50-hour break-in is an oil change, of course, and an oil filter. That requires four, five, six quarts of 10W30, and I got the um, Bobcat oil from Bobcat API CK-4 Tier 4 approved. <laughs> That's some good stuff right there. I've got some hydraulic fluid, some VG68 hydraulic hydrostatic fluid. Don't know how to read it in French, but I think it's French. Anyways, also from Bobcat. And there are two hydraulic filters that will need to be changed, which I have. Damn it, I didn't grab the receipt. I wanna say for all of the fluids here and filters, it was somewhere in the $150 range. Not cheap, but neither is that machine. All right, let's grab that manual, which is right in this little access compartment here. I do have a fire extinguisher that I stuck in here along with some rags. Thank you for the reality check, Andrew Camarada. Camarada, hope I said your name right. All right, here is the manual. Very nicely packaged. Safety manual, <laughs> definitely don't need that. Preventative maintenance, 50 hours. We've got the swing bearing, G, we're gonna grease that. We've got the engine oil and filter, F and R. Replace, first time only, okay. 50 hours, F, R. First time only and replace the travel motors, final drive, fluid. First time only, replace hydraulic filter and case drain filter. Electrical connections for the alternator and starter, we are going to check for the first time. We're going to check the condition, proper operation, adjust or replace as needed. 
And that looks like it. We'll check the coolant level. I've already done that before. There's a whole bunch of shit here in the 10 hour column. Hydraulic fluid check. I did that before. We could check it again. Engine air filters. We're gonna blow out the filters. Fuel system. Not much to check there. Indicators, lights, canopy, travel, motion alarm. I already disconnected that. Seatbelts, don't use them. Safety signs, uh, they're still there. HVAC, I use that every day. Operator cab and HVAC filters. Clean. We will do that too. I have checked the track tension. I did have to make a little adjustment, which is pretty common. Obviously, it's a brand new machine. And you're using it. Those things are breaking in. They're stretching out a little bit, so I did have to give them a couple pumps of grease. But we will check all that today, kind of breeze through some of it. Overall, should be pretty easy. Oh, that's easy. It's right there. I'm guessing that is, man, it kind of looks like 9 sixteenths. If that's 9 sixteenths, well, no one will care. Hell yeah. Actually, it might be metric, but this will work. Damn it, they really freaking, Okay, whoever freaking torqued this thing down had to be a new guy. Oh, holy crap. I'm really banking on this being the oil pan. Oh yeah, that's the oil pan. I'm just kidding, I knew. Not much coming out. I think I need to open up a, pull out the dipstick. There we go, baby. Just needed some air. So the oil drain plug is pretty self-explanatory. It's just a big open hole with the drain plug. And that's it. All right, while the oil is draining, we can see right here, max cold, minimum cold. The motor is actually a little bit warm, but somewhere in that range. So we're good on uh, the coolant. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the air filter and I'm gonna blow that thing out really easy. I'm sure it's dusty. I'll wipe down the housing as well. Hopefully you guys can see this, the air cleaner right there, which we just blew out and put back in. Right here, there is an air cleaner indicator. And if you press on this button right here, you see that little red ring right in this little window. There's a red ring there. That's another way that you can check to see if the air filter needs to be replaced or cleaned out. I would imagine that that's gotta be while it's running where you're actually drawing suction in for that red ring to show up. I probably won't use that much, honestly probably just pull the air filter out periodically, especially if I'm working in a lot of dusty conditions and I'll just blow that thing out or replace it. But that little indicator is kind of cool. Never seen it before. I will pay attention to it. Now the oil filter, try to get my light in there for you. It is right there at the tip of my finger. You kind of see it, it's all gray. And there is an access panel right up underneath there. All right, we'll slide under and see if we can see that. There it is right there and really easily accessible. I can grab a hold of that thing and drain it really easy. Well, at least I think so. I'm gonna need a wrench. Damn it! That might be one of the easiest oil filters to get off as far as accessibility. Now this I can see being a mess. Tinkle, tinkle. Okay, on to the next step. So I've got the oil drain plug back in and tightened up. There are no torque specs in the manual, so just do what feels right. And we are going to get the oil filter in there now. You never want to forget to lubricate the O-ring. Um, the best technique is to use your pinky and just apply it very gently. That's perfect. And never smell your pinky after doing this. Not good. It'll smell like oil, okay? All right, let's get this sucker tightened up. Another quick little side note, there is a, a drive belt right underneath. Just be mindful of that because if you get oil all over that belt, it could be bad news. And I'm gonna mark the date and hours on here. I like to do it afterwards if I can. Otherwise, you just smear it all over the place. Next step. Now, the manual calls for 5.5 quarts of oil in this thing with the filter change. And we have four. Five, six. So we're gonna have a little extra. <laughs> That's okay. Oil fill cap is right here. Just kind of like a rubber plug. 
Everything seems to be pretty accessible so far, which I like. All right, it is the next day. I finished up getting the oil in there last night. So oil, oil filter, air filter, we checked the coolant and Dozer doesn't usually come out here with me and he does not know what to do with himself right now. I put down a little bedding for him over there, but he just keeps wandering around aimlessly. He just has his bone in his mouth and eventually he'll lay down, I think. Come on, buddy, enjoy that bone. No rocket, so that's good. Next item on the list, we're going to tackle the hydraulic filters. One of them is um, the main hydraulic filter. The other one is a case drain filter. Now we do have to pull off the side panel, which is super easy. There's a couple of little clips right here. You just twist them like a thumb clip. And this'll pop right off. Super easy. I can give that a little cleaning too. And we got to pull off that cover. 15 millimeters. A little dirty also, I'll clean that up. One thing I will say I've noticed when I was looking for one of these E35s, I was considering getting a used one, I ended up getting new. The used ones, even with low hours, somehow these people manage to just scratch the out of the counterweight and just the sides of the machine. And I mean, I get you're using it and I'm sure mine will get scratched eventually, but up to this point, I have managed to not get any scratches on it. So this thing is still looking very pristine. Hoping to keep it that way. So we're gonna be changing out this filter and honestly, I don't, I don't see any other filters in here. Oh, uh, I see it. How the hell do I get to that? It's gotta be through the floor. So I think I found the other filter. So just, just above the battery, I'm gonna slide in there and you can see back inside, there's a filter. So I think I'll have to pull the matting off the floor pull up one of those access covers to get to that one. So what it says to do in the manual for that larger hydraulic filter is to install locking hose pliers. You can see one right there and there's one right there. Might be hard to see. Well, I don't have locking hose pliers, so I'm gonna try to use these clamps. Cause this is a pretty good size hose. I mean, that thing looks like it's inch and a quarter. I mean, I get it. The idea is to kind of cut off the supply See, I think you need one right here too. I mean, that's clamped pretty good. We're still gonna get some fluid coming out. Yeah. Dog still doesn't know what to do with himself. All right, I've got this larger hose clamped, this one here clamped. This one's coming right from the reservoir. And then this one clamped. They come to like a T and then in. So along with that, I'm gonna try to jam this little container underneath that filter and hopefully catch all the residual oil that's going to come out of there. And then once we get these filters changed out, we'll have to go back, check the fluid and top it off again. Just as a reference, we're just at the bottom of that little thermometer diagram. You're not going out. Just, just lay down on your little moving blanket. There we go. Let's see if I can jam this in there. There's the fluid. Oh yeah. Please don't be a lot. Our new hydraulic fluid is not blue, it's freaking red. So that's not very good. Dabble this up right now so I can do the quick swaparoo. I think it has slowed down, so I think we're good with the clamps. Should have gloves on and I don't. I'll try to get this in there. This one is freaking full of fluid. I'll try to dump it. Okay, that went about as good as it could have. Not a huge mess, eh, a little bit of a mess. All right, I'm gonna get everything cleaned up here. I'll get this filter labeled and dated and all that happy crap. I wanted to put some hydraulic fluid in the filter before I screwed it on. The hydraulic fluid that I got from them is red and this stuff's blue. So I wanna verify before I put any fluid in there. I, I don't think I have the right stuff. Okay, got the new filter in, got the hours and date on it. And you can see that we are now a little below that little diagram there. So we definitely lost some fluid, obviously. And with a quick Google search, it is not recommended to mix the blue hydraulic fluid with the red fluid. Even though in the manual, the Bobcat VG68 is recommended, probably shouldn't mix them. So I won't be able to use that until I do a full flush on that hydraulic system. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to make a quick trip to Bobcat of Davies County. Not a big deal, but I wanna make sure this is done right. All right, I am back with the blue stuff. This is VG. 46 
hydraulic fluid. But uh, unfortunately, they didn't have any one gallon containers. All they had was these two and a half gallon. I'll use it eventually. This was like 73 bucks. All right, now we're gonna tackle the other case strain hydraulic filter. Go figure, I just put the floor mat back in there after I cleaned it, so the floor mat's super easy to pull out of here. Just lift it out. I need to get into this access panel here and we should be able to get easy access to that filter. Is this 15 millimeter too? Oh, it is. Hell cool. Damn it. Oh, holy shit. These are tight. All right, looks like there are six bolts. Sorry, six nuts. See how it looks underneath here. It looks dirty, that's for sure. So you can see that filter is right there. All right, hopefully you can see this. And hopefully I can get it out of here. All right. Uh, hopefully we don't get a lot of fluid here. We'll see. Yep, there we go. I don't even know where I'm gonna pull this thing out of. This is gonna be a mess. I'm gonna try to throw a clamp on this hose. But the other hose, it's too beefy of a hose. I don't, I can't even get a clamp on that one. This is probably the worst filter. It's gonna have to let it make a mess. This filter sucks. That I will say. How do you get it out of here? Oh crap. You literally can't barely, ah, there we go. I think it's just dumping fluid out. I don't like this one bit. There has gotta be a better way to do this filter. Everything was going so good. It's really tight to get the filter out right here, and fluid is just dumping down there. It's, it's a mess. All right, let's see how much fluid we lost. I can see a puddle of blue on the floor right there. Yeah, we are way down now. Be prepared when you do the K-strain filter. It's a doozy. All right, both hydraulic filters are changed and we are definitely low on hydraulic fluid. So before I drained anything, I looked at where the level was at. So I'm gonna put it right back to where it was and then we will double check it once we're done with the service here. We might be pushing two quarts low. I went a little too much, but that's okay. We'll see where we're at. We're almost at two. I don't freaking know. Well, we used about that much. I'm guessing it was it was definitely at least a quart, probably a quart and a half. It's good that I overfilled it a smidge compared to where it was because I still don't have any fluid in those filters too. So we're definitely, at least this gets us close and then we can check it the way that it tells you to check it and we'll top it off. I did check the battery terminals already, but just note that, um, do a little visual on your battery terminals, make sure there's no corrosion on them. It's always good to just, Keep an eye out when you're doing a service, even if it doesn't call for it, there might be something that you'll notice. There could be an issue. All right, what the hell else we gotta do? Alternator and starter, we're supposed to check it. Just check it. I don't know what the hell I'm supposed to do to it. It works. Quick note, if you're wondering about the alternator belt and the fan belt, uh, both of these paragraphs say the exact same thing, so we'll read one of them here. The fan belt is a special maintenance-free type that is pre-tensioned over the pulleys the belt eliminates the need for a tensioning device and does not require periodic adjustment. Contact your Bobcat dealer for replacement parts. So we don't need to do anything with those. I mean, you could do a visual on them if you want. All right, now I wanna clean out the cabin filters. I think this is actually pretty easy on this machine. Machine. So the cabin filter inside the cab is right there. Pretty straightforward. Let's see how easy it comes out of here. That's about as easy as it gets right there. And then straight through there, comes out on the back side, over there by all the hydraulics. And right here is the other side, the outer side of the filtration. And this just, you just grab it on this upper lip on the top and just pull toward you. And it pops out. That's the cover for it, we'll clean that up. Just kind of presses in there, almost like an air filter on your vehicle. Super easy. So I'm gonna blow that thing out with the air hose same with the inner one, 
wipe everything down and put them back. This actually looks kind of dirty. Oh my God. Things filthy. That could have been in my lungs. Put these back and move on to the next thing. All right, next item on the list, we're gonna change out the fluid in the drives. But in order to do that, you need to have all three of those bolts lined up vertically, which is not the case right now. So I'm gonna hop in, fire this thing up. That's gonna get the oil and the oil filter, the hydraulic fluid and the new hydraulic filters, get everything kind of circulating. I'll get this thing straightened out. Freaking Jake brakes. Whatever, you get the point. Oh, it just sounds smoother. The boom is not moving right now. I'm guessing that that hydraulic filter is filling up with fluid. Yeah. Oh, it sounds horrible. This thing was making some crazy noises right there, and I'm guessing it's because the hydraulic filter was empty. And like I said, I would have liked to have filled that with fluid before I screwed it on. It doesn't say to do that in the manual, but I just didn't have the right fluid at the moment. But uh, we definitely lost quite a bit of fluid there, so I'll have to retop that off like right now. So we are all lined up vertically now, which is perfect. We can go ahead and change out the fluid in those. It is super easy. Ah, dang. Pull out that top one. Nothing will come out. I'll break this loose first. Container under there. I mentioned, oh yeah, there we go. Hopefully you can see that. All right, while that is draining for the travel motors in the manual, lubricant should be API GL-4 or 5 containing extreme pressure additive straight 8W90, which is what we have right here. It is not from Bobcat, probably from Rural King, I'm guessing. Right here in the back, API service GL-5, which is what it requests in the manual. So we are good. Pull out this middle plug. That is our level indicator. Being that this is a drive motor, there could be some shavings in there. A lot of times you'll see a little bit of a tint. So I'm just gonna put some fresh fluid in there and then I'm gonna flush it out. And I'm gonna pull that bottom plug out again and let some of that new fluid just push the old crap out of there. Just so we have good clean oil coming out or gear oil whatever all right that looks good throw that plug back in on the bottom fyi if you've never dealt with gear oil before it smells like a burnt toad you can imagine what that smells like all right i'm gonna wipe down the center hole and we're gonna start filling this thing up and once we see it start spilling out that center hole we are full kind of a slow process it's coming out of there but it's not full yet i know it's not now, sometimes when you use the middle hole as your level indicator, you can kind of get a false reading because the upper hole is dumping right over the top of it. So the manual does spec out the capacity for the final drive as 0.55 quarts. So a better way to do it would be to get yourself one of these, I think it's called a ratio, right? I don't know. I'll leave a link in the description for this and just put the correct level in it and dump it all in and you'll be good to go. That way you know for sure that it has the exact amount. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this side, repeat it on the other track, and then we can move on. All right, it is the next day. I had to call it early yesterday because I took the family to the local rodeo. It's actually a lot of fun. I'll go ahead and tell you, you probably wanna go out there and get you a corn dog. Come on back, we'll let you know when the rodeo starts, ladies and gentlemen. Look at here, look at here. But since I've started this motor and got everything circulating, I just wanted to check the oil. It looks like we are halfway between the two hash marks, so I might um, I might throw a touch more oil in there. And I did go ahead and not topped off, but I put the hydraulic level back to where it was in this position before we started draining everything, but we're going to still check it right now. This diagram tells you exactly what position to put the machine in in order to check the hydraulic fluid level. So I'm gonna go ahead and stretch out the machine, get it in that position, and then we can finish off the hydraulic fluid and move on to the next part. I think we're still consuming some hydraulic fluid because 
the pump is still whining a little bit and I see some, some bubbles in there. But right now our hydraulic fluid is where it's supposed to be. So, so once I get this thing outside, I'm going to start exercising all the movements and make sure that all those filters get filled up and we get all the air out of the lines because it kind of seems like that's what's happened. But like I mentioned, I did it exactly how they told me to do it in the manual. So you can see here, we're within range and you can see it's kind of bubbly. So definitely some air in the lines. All right, next item on the list is to check the track tension. I did do this recently and adjusted them so they should be good. But what we need to do is get this track lifted up off the ground just a little bit because we need to check how much sag there is on the bottom section there. They give you a whole procedure in the manual where you have to put like a jack stand underneath the, the blade and all that. Just use common sense, be safe about it. Don't put your body parts in any kind of a position where something could fall and take a finger or an arm off. Do this at your own risk. All right, we're off the ground. So right here in the manual, it's showing the bottom of that roller to the bottom section of the track. There is a little distance there that we need. And it's saying that distance for rubber tracks should be 0.4 to 0.6 inches. So we'll aim for about a half an inch. And for the steel tracks, should be two and a quarter, two and three quarters of an inch. All right, we're gonna get down low here on the ground. <sighs> you can see right there, from the bottom of the roller here to I believe this top section of the track is supposed to be a half inch gap. And right now we're sitting at about an inch. So I am gonna close that gap up a little bit. Is that a hole in the concrete? It was not long ago that I checked this. That just shows you on these new machines, you need to keep an eye on it because you do not want to run a track off here. Pop in our grease gun. All right, we're gonna give it a Shot of grease. About a half an inch right there. We'll call that good. Pretty damn easy. And if the track is too tight, you'll have to refer back to the manual. It'll tell you exactly what to do to basically relieve all that pressure and then you would start over again. I'm gonna spin the sucker around. I'll do the other side and we'll move on to the last couple final steps. That made no sense. Quick side note. The latch right here for this side cover, it's mounted to a bracket. And I noticed that when I was wiping this thing off, just wiping the dirt off, I noticed it moved a little bit. So on the other side, I checked the nuts on these carriage bolts and both of the nuts were just a little bit loose. So eventually they would have probably vibrated off and I would have lost that bracket. It could have been not a huge problem, but it just confirms why you need to pay attention when you're doing your services, do a visual, Always be looking for other little items. So I went through and I checked all the bolts in here and we're good. Oh, I need to buff it one more time. Two more things to do, but I want to pull the machine outside to do it because if I don't, there's a good chance that I'll die in here. Maybe I'll crack the door. And there's one more little pointer up there on the bucket that the service tech told me about that I wanna share with you because it is not in the manual. All right, before we go and pull this thing outside, we're gonna do probably one of the most important parts because um, this is something that I did not know. On these newer Bobcats, Bobcat can actually track your machine through the cloud. <laughs> so my Bobcat dealer, Bobcat of Davies County, actually called me and said, hey, we see that you're due for your 50 hour service. And I said, wow, you can see that, huh? And he said, yeah, and he asked me if they wanted uh, me to take advantage of their services and, and get this thing in there and have them do it. And I told them, no, I'll go ahead and do it on my own. But you can see that we're at 51 hours. The service shows that we still have 0.4 hours left to go till it needs to be serviced. So we're in the clear. And I don't know how to reset it. I'm gonna try just holding this. Okay, so as I held it, it said reset. And then, okay, I don't know why it went to 50 hours. All right, for resetting the maintenance clock, this is our style screen. It tells us to do exactly what we did, get to the maintenance part, um, hold, the, hold the info button until the reset pops up. And it says the maintenance clock cannot be reset unless the planned maintenance interval is less than 10 hours away or the maintenance is past due. So we were within range there and it reset us to 50 hours, which does make sense because if you go to the maintenance intervals, we just did our 50 and at 100, there's nothing in this column 
but when we go over to this page in the 100 column, we do have the spark arrestor that we are supposed to clean. So I think we're all good there. All right, first thing I wanna do is just exercise everything because the hydraulics still sound a little goofy. Something smells a little funky. Okay, all right, now I'm going to remove the bucket. So we can get in there and get to those grease fittings. All right, I'm gonna stretch this thing out, get it down low so I can reach everything. And I'll probably have to move it around a little bit to grease everything, that's okay. So I'm gonna get everything greased just like you normally would if there's any fittings that you think you might have missed, just refer back to the manual. It has a diagram that shows you everything. Come on, big rig. But you have to be careful down here on the linkage where the bucket is because there are a ton of grease fittings. You might see one right here and think that's it, but there's actually a couple more underneath and it's like that in multiple places. So really spend some time and look at it. You might have to reposition that all a little bit here and there to get to those spots, but something to be aware of. What we have to do for the swing and the pinion bearing those two fittings right there we need to put like four or five pumps of grease in them every 90 degrees so i'm going to start off going this way hit it four or five pumps turn it 90 degrees the way it's sitting now and then that way and then backwards and that will get grease all the way around that sprocket one two three four five one two three four five one two three four All right, that should be it for greasing. You got to keep the teats clean here. All right, now for the pointer that they do not tell you about in the manual. So what the technician told me was these little posts that pop out for the hydraulic exchange. You want to make sure that you clean those on a regular basis and use WD-40 and just spray it all over them cycle them in and out a couple times because this will help with the seals in there keeping them lubricated because these exchange pins are prone to leaking after a certain period of time especially if they're not getting used very often i think i use mine quite a bit but so we're going to lube this up real good clean the other side up real good and he said all you need is some wd-40 so all right, I'm gonna cycle them in and out a couple times. We'll lube it up again. All right, that pretty much wraps up the service. All right, he's texting me. Oh, lunch is ready. <laughs> Better take care of that. Anyways, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. How the f did a leaf get in here? Oh, God, that's freaking beefy. This little bobcat on there. Rare.